So let's jump in. Trata. Mm -hmm. Ha. Let me get rid of this banner. We don't need this. All right. Tommy V, shout out to the beautiful people in the Dan fam. Hello, everybody. Toaster says, I'm still holding my crypto and not planning on selling it. Sounds good. But with everything happening, this feels like the first steps towards the end of crypto. This is how it always feels in bear markets. Everybody's a euphoric in bullishness. And like, it'll never go down. And then, of course, it goes down. And then, of course, people will always, it's always a different narrative, right? In 2017, 2018, it was all about this is the future. And this is what's going to happen. And it's going to be awesome. But then we realized that uh, we were nowhere near that. And uh, no one was actually really building the rails. So it just collapsed. And then this next one in 2021, people always tell me, Rob, you don't understand. There's so many institutions like MicroStrategy and the like, and even El Salvador. Yeah, Bitcoin will never go down from now on because there's just too many things to buoy it up. And I'm like, just wait. And here we are. So again, that never changes. And then, of course, even though you think that bear markets will last forever, they don't. They're like the rain in Puerto Rico. If you don't like it, just wait a little bit. It'll change. Hello, Battle Rap. Even Sam Bacon Free believes most cryptos is Ponzi. I saw that one where he was talking about it. And I think it's true. I think in, in some of these, I think everything's a Ponzi until it becomes stable. Let me introduce you to the American uh, social security system. <laughs> Let me introduce you to pensions. It's the same thing. Like you have to, to actually get things going, you have to actually bring more money in or else everything collapses. That's just the truth. Uh, let's see. Twisted says Rob Shills, but doesn't rug pull like other pumps and dumps. Yeah, I got to get away from that that term. I think because shill has a negative connotation and we're right, rightfully slow, rightfully show. But I am an aggressive promoter of the projects that I invest into and believe in. That's what I should be saying. But I didn't. Anyhow, good point, Twisted. Uh, YSK, uh, someone made a good point on Twitter showing how commodities have come down quite a bit since all-time high this past year. Yeah, and I think even Ben talks about it, about into the cryptoverse, and he talks about how beforehand commodities would always drop down and then kind of rebound as we start to rebound out of the uh, recession, which I believe we're in right now. So buckle up. There's going to be a lot of, lot of that going on. Uh, bombs away. Says, you guys are fools to trust any unregulated exchanges. Could, uh, he's not wrong. Uh, ben Cole, Rob, don't you promote Celsius? Yes, I used to promote Celsius. I also used to go to Blockbuster. I also used to use a real typewriter to type my papers <laughs> when I had to put them out. But uh, as time goes on, I realized that one are just completely useless and one uh, didn't tell me all the things they were doing behind the scenes. So I don't talk about them anymore. And uh, that was why on June 12th, I put out that video saying to take all your money off of Celsius. And I did the same thing on June 22nd with Voyager. So hope that answers your question. The herd is following Gareth Soloway. Dude, I remember we would talk about Gareth briefly on the DCA shows, me, Ben, and James behind the scenes before we got, got going on. We're like, can you believe this guy thinks that we're going to go uh, below 14 or even like below 20 when it was 40? Who's laughing now? So yeah, he was right. Ah, guitar. Benji Gwaltney just covered. Oh, yeah, someone said that they had a, uh, a Celsius tattoo. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Noah says, just cover with a Voyager tattoo. Eesh. You're hitting low. It's funny. Uh, this last news, uh, Rob, I understand that Celsius was a peer-to-peer -peer collateralized lender. It was even stated in multiple AMAs about their flywheel model. That's fraud if that wasn't done in pain. That is for the legal process to sort out. It's just that uh, I just know that when I got a loan, I had to collateralize either 2X, 3X, or 4X. And that made a lot of sense to me. So I just, uh, I find it hard to believe that uh, institutions could just take it for nothing and then do whatever they want to. And they're like, that's good. You guys got a great track record. I don't know. Uh, and this is a great point from YSK. I need to learn more about how to tell when things are cheap versus inexpensive. Just trying to figure out when to buy alts. And you know what? That's what I was talking about for uh, this one, George Gammon. And um, he, I got to, if anybody knows George Gammon, could you help me get him on the show so he could explain that better? But it's a real good point to not look at indicators and go, well, it's the bottom, I'm going to buy right here, and then it goes down again. It's just to look at things and go, what's, what is cheap 
and what is expensive. Right now, crypto is cheap, I think. It could get cheaper, but it is still cheap. And right now, houses are expensive, so I will not buy real estate, especially commercial. That's just crazy. So uh, if anybody knows, uh, uh, George, uh, help me out. And uh, let's see what else we got. This is a great question. How trustworthy is iTrust Capital? Just signed this past week. They just put out a, a comment about, and again, <laughs> not to say anything, but I told these guys directly. I said, I need someone to come on the show ASAP. Because if you just say, trust me, we're okay. We're a Roth IRA company. You can trust us. It's not going to fly. I understand they're like, look, we don't do any, we don't do any type of crazy DeFi plays. We don't do loans or do anything like that. I go, I get it. But Voyager also said the same thing a week ago. They said, hey, we vet everybody who we loan to. Your money is safe and everything is good. People don't want to hear that. They want to hear a face talking to them, saying exactly why they're safe. And look, this is where I trust. For, there's a couple of things. First of all, when you do it a Roth IRA, you can only put in so much, so much amount per year. Like for me, I have a I cap at seven thousand. I can't go in there and put ten million dollars immediately into a Roth IRA. It doesn't work like that. So on that part, at least I won't lose everything. If someone says I put it all in there, maybe seven thousand is everything, and that's the bigger thing. And the second thing is they said, well, there's no monthly fees, so how do they make any money? It's because they take one percent for everything that you trade within your Roth IRA account. And that's where they make it. And believe me, they got a lot of, they're like a billion dollar company now. And they have a lot of people who are smart, who trade within their Roth IRA account. And that's it. And they also use Coinbase custody, which is the same that uh, Michael Saylor, Michael Strategy used. Having said all that, I'm still telling these guys, you need to come on the show. You need to come on the show. You need to come on the show. I need a face here. So once that happens, I'll let you know and go from there. Thanks, man. Jack and a crack. Jack and a crack. It's funny. Hit the like button. Uh, Gertie, can you play us a little <laughs> guitar player, Nara? And uh, Jack and the crack. I use the app all the time. Yeah. I'm just curious if that's the uh, Trueflation or the uh, Laguna app. Okay. And then uh, let's see what else. Oh. Hello from Lithuania. Hello. I did. It's true. You be safe out there. Uh, so this is, Jan Chow has a good point. And this is from CoffeeZilla. Because CoffeeZilla, if you don't follow CoffeeZilla, if you're looking for any type of like scams and things like that, go follow that guy. He's always, <laughs> that's his whole show. And he's got millions of subscribers, does a lot of good work, a lot of interesting stuff. And he says, does your opinion of VGX purposely file bankruptcy wrong and not file as a brokerage? Because it's always been told to me that they were a brokerage. Has anybody heard anything different? That's how it was explained to me. They are a brokerage. They're like the hotels.com. They go to all these different ex exchanges and go, okay, out of all these five, six, seven, or how many they had uh, uh, partnerships with, out of these ones, give me the best rate. You guys are the best rate? Great. Uh, so I want to buy Bitcoin at 19283 Okay, I just save these guys 10% on that. I give them the lowest price and I take a little sliver of that percentage and that's how I make money. That's what a brokerage is, as I was led to understand. However, as they filed it, they didn't file it as a brokerage, which would be a SIPA. And a SIPA is, if they did that, then it would be immediate liquidation. And they're saying that the point of contention is that they weren't trading securities because it's up in the air. So here's the thing. That's just how they filed it. Do I think it's wrong? Or I think it's right. I think you use the rules that are given to you and you play by the rules. And if the, one of those rules is it's ambiguous to say what is a security or not, then that's what you do. And that's just how it is. So it's not about that. My big question is, is when did they become uh, solvent? When are they able to open up? When are they, what does this plan really entail and how fast can we get it moving? Because right now there's four parts of that plan. The first part is the people that, for the restructuring, they'll get stock in Voyager. I don't know if people even want that. They're also gonna get the VGX token. I don't know if people are gonna want that. They're gonna get their money back for USD and they're also gonna get their crypto back pro rata, which is, that should be the same amount that you get. Not pro rated, but pro rata, P-R-O-R-A-T-A. -A. So we'll see. 
I just want everybody to get their money back and their crypto. Oh man. Zeno says, I just got here, but effing Celsius, I have eight ETH in there, and this point seems a loss. Good outcome at this point would be getting a small amount of back. Look, even if I even if people take a haircut, 10, 20, 30 percent, I think some people are like, thank God, and they would take it, which is kind of weird to think about that uh, we would take a 30 percent cut for trusting in a company. <laughs> Trust me, bro. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Damon says, or well, I appreciate the honesty about your hits and misses. It's refreshing. I seem to forget everything they said in the past. Everybody's got Alzheimer's. Look, I can't have that because like, well, I have to come here. I have to come here every day. I'm going to be here anyhow. So why don't I just take the, the comments that come at me and just address them head on? You know, you just show up. You just show up and you keep moving forward. That's how life is. Life sucks sometimes. George Gammon is a, yes, he is. I'm going to show it to you in three simple steps. Yeah, that guy. Good guy. Uh, <laughs> Nova Grass does have a, has a Terra Luna tattoo. What a great reminder. When you wake up every morning, wouldn't that be like the greatest reminder? They're like, don't go too heavy into one specific thing. Maybe dig a little bit deeper. Don't get tattoos of companies that you invest into. That would be my thing. And let's see. Thanks, Loris. In the zone, I try to be. Hmm. I don't think so. Fanny Sumi says, in Sweden, we can invest in Bitcoin certificates. And it's been working since 2014. Is the same as Fanny, I got to tell you, I got to give you a word of warning here. Um, Bitcoin certificates sound like paper Bitcoin. And that means that you don't own that Bitcoin. So the question that I have for you is, in that certificate, I'm just going to ask, do they give you like your private keys for that one? Or is it just like, here is here is some Bitcoin, and there you go. And uh, just give us some money, and we'll, you can redeem whatever you want to. That's not that's not uh, Bitcoin. If that's how I understand it, I could be wrong. So let me know in the comment section. Always make sure, like we talked about, uh, don't keep anything on exchanges. Don't keep anything anywhere. Keep it on your hard, cold storage wallet. That would be the best thing for me. Uh, does I trust fall on your rules? 100% scam. So here's the, this right here, the rules, 100% are scams. What it means is everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Treat everything as a scam until the actual reality comes out and the truth. And then you can say, okay, this is what it is. Obviously, not everything is a scam. That would be, that means that you would never invest in anything. But if you treat everything like a scam first and you verify don't trust, that's what I'm talking about. Again, if you get a message from Satoshi Nakamoto says, hey, I got some Bitcoin, just send me two Bitcoin and I'll send you four Bitcoin. Uh, it's probably a scam. So that's the things I'm talking about. I think that's it. We're going pretty long today. God dang it. Is it a good investment? I think so. I like the, some people say it's a ghost chain. I don't see how it's possibly a ghost chain. And people say, well, who's really developing on it? A lot of people. So before I get everybody, let me just show you something. Who's like, oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, really. Hold on. That's not it. Uh, that's the four-year cycles. What I'm looking for is, here we go, this. There's a link in the description. It's called Cardano Ghost Chain. And you can find this slideshow there. And... This is the Cardano ecosystem in 2020. And I couldn't even find a good picture. It was all jacked up, but that's 2020. Here it is in August, 2021. Here it is in November, 2021. And here it is in April, 2022. Here are the projects being built on Cardano presently as of 6th of June. So in a month, maybe there's some more. Wallet, stable coin, oracles, NFT marketplaces, data, developer tools, identity solutions, blah, 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 blah. Here's all the, uh, the staking, 33 billion. 692 million, 6,000. Here's how it looks as far as staking rewards. So the staking market cap, which is roughly 71%, is about 11 billion being staked. And what's crazy to me is that with Cardano, there's no lockup periods, like with Ethereum and Solana. It's just, you don't, you just put it in and say it's staked. They can unlock anytime. They, and there is no lock, so there's no unlock. They can, they can take it out of, out of the Dan, the D new stake point time they want to, but there's still 71% of that. And then also people will say, what about DeFi, Rob? What about DeFi? 
Well, as far as DeFi Llama is concerned, there's 72 billion locked up for total value. And yes, Ethereum does have 45 billion, which is very true. Uh, but Bitcoin only has 118.55 million. And Cardano is in good company with 118.56 million. So yeah, not like it's locked up in the DeFi part, but if you look at the other things, is a ghost chain? I just don't see that being the case. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments and uh, we go from there. Let me stop the screen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Rob is a medic on World War II. It feels like it. Rob, the password link doesn't reset. Uh, I'll take a look at it. Send me an email. And uh, Flesh is talking about uh, danteachescrypto.com, 100% free website. It's always free. And it's all the stuff that I uh, think that everybody should know about crypto and how it all works and how to use a cold storage device and how to avoid scams and uh, different and things I've learned along the way. And I'll leave it with this. Great point. Time in the market is more important than timing the market. So look, that's it for today. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing to this every day. I try to do, well, yeah, every day, just about. And that's it for this one. So thanks so much for hanging out with me for over an hour, almost an hour, 1,500 of you. I appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right. Thanks, everybody. Adios.